Good afternoon to you all, I'm Daniel Miller and this is Destiny 2 Beyond Light. A warm welcome to all of our friends, fans, viewers, community members and participants worldwide watching the stream on different platforms. <coughs> Thank you for joining us today and indeed I am most grateful for your support um, and uh, all that we received here on the channel. Uh, today we'll carry on with Destiny 2 as indicated last week. We are having Destiny streams during the week and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday the majority of uh, our time here is spent in Warzone. So really, I think I find a really good balance in between the two games. And as you know, we are all very, very dedicated veterans of both games. And uh, Warzone has been somewhat busier than Destiny. Overall, we had a very, very good, vibrant, energetic community <coughs> joining the channel. And as you've seen, every single day, quite a selection of matches and a lot of fun for everyone to be had. Uh, we'll start out with some news. First of all, everyone needs to watch Resident Evil Village presentation from Friday. It's delivered via PlayStation channel on YouTube and uh, it did provide us with a lot of insight into what we are to be expecting from Resident Evil and Village, which will be, I think, released in March, if I'm not mistaken. Presently, what you can do is you can download a um, special kind of VIP demo directly to your PlayStation 5 if you are already in possession of the console. If not, you have to wait for a little while and then you'll be able to get like an open demo for everyone on uh, PlayStation, PlayStation 4 and 5 inclusive and therefore engage with the same content. Uh, in the presentation we've had quite a few people who are involved with the, uh, the project telling us a lot more about ins and outs of the gameplay, the story and everything else. There's been one thing I really particularly liked and as you know, uh, this year we are celebrating 25 years, quarter of a century, of Resident Evil. And I remember buying the game in 1996 and playing it on PlayStation 1. And it's, indeed it was a, a wonderful, wonderful experience uh, for all of us who were in possession of the game and the console. Uh, which at that time was a fantastically big novelty. We all had our PCs and PlayStation 1 really revolutionised the way we play games. Because, you know, I think for the gamers of younger generation of today, you are not familiar with all the troubles we had with um, PC games of that era. Uh, basically, uh, not all games were compatible with every machine, and there were no patches. You know, very few people had internet connections, and the internet, as we know today, was in its infancy. So really, it did take us a long, long while uh, to get to this level. And uh, I remember having quite a few problems with a selection of games I purchased in Notting Hill. Uh, all of you who were in those days uh, looking for a second-hand shop, there was just one in the entire city of London and it was called Computer and uh, um, Computer and Video Game Exchange. It was based uh, at Notting Hill, which at Very Junction, Bayswater Road and um, Pembridge Road, the one that takes directly to uh, <laughs> Portobello if you're familiar with West London and uh, it was a very very well it was a reasonably big shop uh, occupying two floors of a very large building next to Gate Cinema so Gate Cinema is still there that shop I think is long gone I'm not, I've not been there for a little while so I need to really check it out because I remember that some of the guys who worked in that shop uh, started out with a new project called Computer Exchange and it evolved into CX that we have today so you know a bit of history really uh, goes back 25 years um, in time and uh, certainly CX the original computer exchange was very popular very similar 
to what we'd had uh, there at uh, Tape and Video Exchange. But the difference there was that it was offering hardware and uh, uh, a lot of other equipment rather than just video games. And um, we know that CX took off in a major fashion uh, halfway through the last uh, the decade before last already. I mean, I'm still living in uh, the deck in the notice in the notice it took off. <laughs> and uh, I used to go to Notting Hill a lot earlier than that. It was uh, in the early 90s. Cut long story short, once the PlayStation console came out, and that was PlayStation 1, we had a, um, uh, a completely different way to which we can approach gaming. Uh, the games were coming out in large numbers and, most importantly, what we had was no problems. You know, you bought that game on disc, you placed it in your console and it worked perfectly. Never any problems. And also it was fast loading. Uh, for you know, for the original console, so that's how I got acquainted with the PlayStation. Then I wired it up to my projector and my home cinema, and a wonderful, wonderful experience uh, of being able to play games at the time together with friends. So it's similar to what we have here on Twitch, albeit in a much smaller numbers because you would invite people to your home, you know, play games together. And we had some. Uh, I remember doing, I think it was Resident Evil 2 co op, and I also had. Um, Medal of Honor Underground, it was also uh, uh, providing us with co ops so myself and some friends would always get together and do it on a very, very large screen, which was, you know, providing us with a wonderful, wonderful entertainment and a novel experience, particularly uh, in those days where they are uh, already gone by, for s you know, so many years ago. I mean, look at it and uh, bygones, you know, if that's the word, bygones. It was in the 90s, in the 90s, we already know in the third decade of uh, 21st century so time flies we get on and uh, as we've seen our tech is also developing uh, de developing and evolving look at this developing and evolving I created the words <laughs> which means something completely different all right so um, once again uh, what I really appreciated was the merger of the skins from Resident Evil and uh, uh, emerging uh, in Destiny 2, right? So it's the merger of uh, Resident Evil and, oh no, Destiny 2, I've got it wrong, The Division 2. And we've had uh, uh, one of the producers uh, from the team that worked on, on The Division, they also said that they were looking forward to that sort of uh, limited time skins mode that you're going to be able to claim. So for all of our, our Destiny and Destiny and uh, The Division 2 veterans here, please do remember to check it out and download it because it's not going to be there forever and it is a bit like a collectible item. You are going to be getting it because it is offered within that 25 year celebration mode and I certainly looked at some of the characters from the division and they look really great in those costumes on those skins or outfits and so make sure you check it out. Also we were given a bit of gameplay, a bit of uh, uh, a kind of a sneak preview of the demo as well. The demo is a separate entity, so what you play in a demo, you're not going to be seeing in the game. That's really good. I really like the idea because I don't like playing demos that are then replayed within the game. And, uh, you know, altogether, a lot to look forward to. The entire team was uh, thanking everyone for, you know, a quarter of a century of support. And uh, I think visually it looks really mouth watering. Very, very scary. Very scary. It did remind me a bit more of Silent Hill than the usual Resident Evil franchise, but you know, it's usually that sort of thing, very atmospheric, very gory, very scary, and uh, you know, for all of us, Destiny, I mean the uh, Resident Evil veterans, we have uh, plenty to look forward to. So ev everyone, check out the presentation, it was out on PlayStation Channel on Friday, and you know, just have a look and send us a message or tweet indicating what you think, whether you are excited whether you're anticipating release or you know what you want to be seeing on another note i know we are streaming on playstation at the moment but um everyone who is on uh, uh, xbox uh, can access virtually everything resident evil related on a greatly discounted price so you have the entire series offered on 40 to 70 percent discounts and you really have to take advantage of this because this, it's unlikely you'll get such massive discounts in the near future and everything that's ever come out is included. Also check it out on the PlayStation Store if uh, the same offers are persisting. I'm quite certain that there are special offers in there. I didn't really have a look at it today but I had some emails from Microsoft indicating that 
we have uh, uh, you know little time to uh, snap up all these special offers so I always do that and I think I'll be looking at uh, because I have <laughs> the entire Resident Evil series on PlayStation I'll be looking at um, basically beefing it up on my Xbox through those discounted prices we'll see and the only trouble there is you know because they're doing um, remakes and remasters that you purchase the older version and then guess what a new one comes out in fact I yesterday had a look at um, Bioshock on PlayStation Now services and I played all three games through the same service which is the the um, uh, corporations uh, streaming service here on PS and unfortunately they've replaced the original games with the re with the remastered versions and uh, the remastered versions do not have the same save so all I've played in there is gone and I really have to say that I don't like the way um, the data is being saved on PlayStation it's quite fidgety uh, for some of the games for the uh, single ga uh, single player games and particularly if you own them you can download initially the saves and then uploads to um, the cloud which is quite small and it requires a lot of kind of a manual fidgety exercise and for instance in this instance as you've seen um, you, you know you, you, they're just replacing the older game with the remastered version and the saves were not uh, kept on the server so if you had loads of saves you completed everything that's all gone and uh, you know, I've not seen or heard or been notified of those changes. I've received no messages, so you know, nobody informed me about what was to come. And that itself was very, very annoying. So, um, you know, I think I'm hoping that with that partnership between Microsoft and PlayStation, we'll have a more um, up to scratch, more novel, more compatible type of system introduced as uh, I think that PlayStation albeit phenomenally you know how to put it places lagging behind on the front it's simple as that and as well as on the app and uh, social networking i think microsoft community is much more advanced easier to connect to and you know they will have to re reconsider in a longer term and they still really are harboring the um, notion that people should be owners of the games purchasing physical or digital products and i think that needs to be coming um, uh, as, as the secondary objective compared to what we have today because I, I certainly had purchased quite a selection of games on Xbox after playing them for free and I played them for free on Xbox Game Pass so you know it is it is the other way which appears to be more popular and more useful than the old ways and uh, certainly anyone who is an avid gamer who plays like hundreds of games will tell you if you're losing your saves then you know there is a serious problem on another a bit more positive note I did revisit some other games I played on PlayStation now a couple of years ago and obviously all the saves were there the reason is simple the games were not taken off the service you know they're still on the server but um, with Xbox irrespective of whether the game is uh, offered on the Game Pass or whether you're getting it through any other means as long as it is the same game you are going to be able to access your saves at any moment in time and that really is fundamental I think for anyone who's a, a long time gamer and uh, it needs to be kept that way so remember the new skins the new outfits which are imported into the world of Division 2 are <coughs> presently available and they are being imported from Resident Evil franchise uh, select carefully and uh, purchase them because they are going to be the 25th anniversary collectible items and also download that demo if you already have your PlayStation 5 not just uh, remain patient we are going to be getting it in no time on PlayStation 4 as well uh, the other bit of news this week is on Hitman 3 Hitman 3 has been released last week and we are getting rave reviews from everywhere a brand new post release trailer has been released I think the weekend I really can't wait to re crack on with the gameplay it seems to me that they basically enhanced everything that we've seen in previous installments and they delivered it in a one massive massive big new stealthy puzzler 
so that is really really exciting for us to enjoy and uh, we are definitely want to be exploring it as soon as practicable try to think what other news we've had just a very very few bits of news because obviously i have a separate new slot where you can get all the information at all times but just wanted to warm up our friends yeah the third little bit of news is you have um Ghost Recon Breakpoint offered this weekend also on a greatly reduced price of £8.45. It's a massive game. Anyone who's into stealth and military simulation tactics needs to purchase it because uh, it's unlikely that you'll get it on such a low price. It is on uh, Microsoft Store, still available today. Make sure you post it today because uh, the offers will expire tomorrow. And also we received a, a brand new teaser. Well, they said it was a trailer, but actually it's a teaser um, on Stalker 2. And for all of you familiar with that uh, stealthy uh, game from the 90s, a PC game of course, uh, very similar to um, the um, other offshoots like Metro, uh, we acquired that trailer and it looks incredible. I have to say it looks like 4K and uh, phenomenally well developed um, audio visuals, very interesting gameplay and immediately as soon as you watch the trailer you're back to the world of Stalker, Shadow of Chernobyl and uh, you know you're cracking on where you left it off so also have a look at the trailer become a bit familiar with it and i'm quite curious to see whether the game is going to be released on all platforms because the original one is still only on pcs and uh, i personally would like to see the, the original game remastered and also given to us on consoles as well that would be my own personal preference nevertheless like we've seen with the witcher with the first game being a pc one and then the other two following on all platforms i think it's likely to be exactly the same for this wonderful wonderful stealthy adventure game so these are the news right so let me see who is there because i think sukapupu and um, spurs are going to be joining us today this is what um, we talked about last week so hopefully everybody's there let me just quickly have a look i will be with you in a second so let me see who is there. Unfortunately, I don't see either of them live, so maybe they're just waiting. We'll see. Um, right, so we're getting back to Destiny. Presently, we are streaming Destiny 2 on off uh, my PlayStation, and uh, I do not have all the components of the sequel on PlayStation. The reason for that is uh, the full game with uh, all DLCs and everything else is accessible on Xbox Game Pass. Going back to um, PlayStation for one simple reason, uh, which is our friends are on the console and uh, it's easier for them to be playing um, this game on PlayStation 4. So I wanted to get our usual busy energetic community sessions back here on the channel because I've got to say, as I um, streamed it on Xbox, the community was rather depleted we've had very little interaction and i really thought hang on this is not the way to be the game indeed is uh, all about the community and you know when you play together with your team you're getting a lot better atmospheric type of input you have a lot more fun and uh, the game has been created for that three-man input and therefore i thought this was the best way forward so we can't do some of the content if some of the requests come in uh, as we are still waiting for Destiny 2 to go uh, fully cross-platform. That is expected within the first three months of this year. So probably before <coughs> uh, before uh, the spring, we are going to be getting a full cross-platform access, which will be truly wonderful as all of our friends can then merge and come into one big online community similar to what we have um, you know, with Apex and uh, PUBG and most importantly Warzone and y you've seen how vibrant, how energetic and really great that community is and that will be happening here with Destiny as well so I personally can't wait for that to take place I've been asking Bungie already for quite some time to be considering it and there are reasons as to why they were hesitant because lots of people who migrated from uh, other PC games were quite keen on keeping it one platform specific but as you know the latest, the newest tech is giving us the opportunity to uh, um, basically adjust so if you want to be having cross-platform we can if we do not want to have it we just switch it off and therefore be accessing just the players who are playing it on a specific device and um, it's obvious that if you're getting into cross-platform arena 
your matchmaking will be extremely fast and everything will be very very hectic if you are going to be sticking to your single platform then you'll have to be waiting for a bit longer but as you know for the FPS games being uh, on a PC where you have a full command of mouse and keyboard will always give you a lot of advantage uh, compared to others and uh, we know that lots of people do not want to be migrating from PCs to consoles for that reason alone and I did talk to uh, several Far Community members who in fact recently migrated to uh, uh, very expensive uh, <coughs> gaming PC rigs and they, you know, they said the difference was incredible although we have been building expertise on uh, uh, controllers we still find that uh, using them on a PC will give us a lot more prevalence, a lot more muscle we have advantage it's much easier to aim etc etc also it's something about the way your um, controls are registering on the screen or you know within the game itself because lots of people are not using controllers that are connected by um, micro USBs to the console which means there's a slight lag between what you're asking your character to do and what happens and as you will appreciate with FPS and battle royale this is fundamental. Speed is of essence. If you're lagging, if you're late, if you have latency or any sort of delay, well, you can't really compete, can you? And that exactly is the major reason for it. So, Destiny is going to crack on today with our story missions. I was doing uh, the first few the other day with Spurs and Sakapupu. We had a lot of fun. And also we were trying to complete Dungeon, the activity that I've never done before. <coughs> and we decided to go down the route of uh, we decided to go down this route um, the route through which I'm building a new character and we are then exploring the new campaign the story missions you will know that they have been completely um, reworked and after the 10th of November as Beyond Light came our way we acquired a different sort of story so it's very very unusual, very strange to be entering Destiny 2 after obviously I played it for several years and to experience uh, the beginning which is very similar if not almost identical to what we had in the original game hence the character Shohan who is introduced there as a guide and I really think that his presence works a lot better compared to our old ghost and uh, the, the, the most important thing is he's providing a lot more information in separate segments so you're not being uh, yeah you're not suffering from major information overload which previously was of concern to me and um, we did have on my channel several times uh, uh, like a, a, a major run on the story in a linear fashion so we're telling it exactly as it should be told according to its um, order and I thought you know before doing it for the first time as you know the destiny I mean you know that destiny was uh, one of the first games to be offering that sort of non-linear access to the content and um, it was revolutionary at the time it really made the game thrive but uh, I thought if we did it in a linear fashion like a proper straightforward narrative uh, from beginning to end that we are going to be more familiar with all the characters story but actually <coughs> there were two things that I experienced as a downside first of all when you did the first eight missions they appear to be very repetitive you're always going back to the same place in Cosmodrome and starting out at the same spot encountering the same enemies you never had that feeling when you were doing it with all the other missions and tasks because they were blending in with all other things and you know you revisited the area but it wasn't the same sort of thing that you're just redoing it and um, so you know <laughs> it was on the story front I didn't manage to uh, and disentangle all the characters and situations so to find out who Rasputin was and what his relationship with uh, the darkness would have been and uh, you know why was Omnigal there seemed altogether craftily concealed and uh, I talked to many other veterans who played uh, the game for a couple of thousand hours and they said well we just kind of forgot about the story we've been enjoying the visuals and our battles and most important our community because we did everything in a three-piece and I think that's exactly as to why the game was popular. Destiny 2 as a sequel does have lots of other things on offer it's quite a mixture and uh, you know they want to have something that would be called something for everyone and uh, we tried to really entertain some of it um, last week as Spurs joined us here and uh, being a player who tried Destiny but did not, did not really um, progress very far for various reasons I thought offering this opportunity to try out different activities 
that combined PvE and PvP and everything else that is on offer would provide that degree of variety and I think we had a very good week although some areas of Destiny didn't perform too well after the latest Tuesday maintenance and update we had some problems with strikes uh, they were glitchy we're being booted out all the time couldn't com we couldn't complete even a single strike and uh, <coughs> also uh, we felt that there were serious problems with server access um, on PvP and that's the crucible we couldn't really do anything much in there and uh, therefore we migrated first to Gambit and then to Dungeon towards the end of the week we've gone to um, story missions and Dungeon we tried to um, grind for two days in a row but it was, it was just too difficult the enemy uh, in the end was uh, far too strong and uh, you know too powerful for uh, particularly for myself and Spares but still Sick of Hoop was also struggling with it so I'm not sure we'd have done something to it but it did appear to be a, <coughs> a top notch pinnacle activity very similar to uh, what we do in Destiny Raids well so I'll have a look again <coughs> to see whether our friends are back but uh, we'll crack on with a hunter this is my hunter future will cult outfit that would be part of it and then we'll carry on with some of the story missions I must admit I've thoroughly enjoyed them the other day of the last city humanity has endured a devastating blow Vanguard scouts have confirmed that Io Mars Titan and Mercury have disappeared we don't know why we have lost contact with Deputy Commander Sloan and Jensen Scribe Ashami. We are deploying guardians to all corners of the system to find answers. And with those answers, we will form a plan. In the meantime, we ask that all lightless civilians remain within the safety of the city walls, under the protection of the traveler. Do not lose hope. Humanity has survived many horrors. We have done so through the strength of our community, through steadfast commitment to one another. Stay strong. Be brave. The Traveler protects us, and we will protect you. The Guardians will come through. They always do. This is what we received <coughs> at the beginning of Beyond Light. I'm not sure as to why it was played here right now. Hard to tell. I guess we are going to find out. Terrible things born out in the darkness. Every moment brings them closer. My future does not begin here, but yours does. It's time to step beyond the light. begins with a splinter. Danger. 
That's another one. They all scan the same. Empty. Why did the darkness invite us here? You're quiet today. Yeah. It's just, we keep coming face to face with darkness. And every time we fail to stop it, we're just so powerless. I'm thinking of a distress signal. Someone's in trouble. This is all part of Beyond Light. <clears throat> You're right, I'm not sure as to why we were given. Track Varix's distress signal beyond the ridge. We'd better hurry. Hmm. That's a bit odd. And uh, So Varix traded the prison of elders for this? I guess if I played a part in the murder of Keen Six, I'd hide on a desolate moon myself. No, that's that's something that should be happening a lot later. So I'm not sure what's happening. Um, let me just quickly have a look. Well, we unlocked Europa, which means it's accessible. And um, see, I lost her. No, it's like a poo poo. Very odd. Can't see anybody out there. Don't know what's happening. Let me see. Let's again. Our friends are live. No, they're not. Just wait for our friends to join us, and in the meantime, what we'll do is we'll have a look at the map. We need to go back to um, destinations, Let's go back to the tower, do some admin, and I'll just remind you now of uh, the tasks before me. These tasks, I need to do these tasks. <laughs> 
and it's not operating properly today. This task needs to be done by myself without any form of input from my team. So let's see what these really are. Sekapupu did complete them on his characters and he said I was to be leading those on all by myself. So let's find out. The new beginning of Destiny as presented here is significantly different. The entire war against the enemy the Red War campaign is gone. So, you know, it's a bit strange. You're starting out a new character, revisiting the old world of Destiny 1 in Cosmodrome. And um, it does feel half... I said half-baked. It does feel like the game is in major progress. You know, it's been reworked. And eventually we'll see what the structure is going to be. So first of all, I need to look at my admin. So we'll look at uh, my inventory. Picked up uh, 1163, both of these, okay. Nothing to be stashed. Scavenger suit, gauntlets. And there are these, all the green ones need to be gone. Okay. Night watch scout trifle Costa will keep because Costa we may be able to um work on. You remember in Destiny One there was a lengthy pinnacle weapon quest with Costa Rifle, which was quite hard to complete. I'm wondering whether they already imported it here or not. Right, I think with the basic inventory. One emblem. No, it's that's all in order. And uh, looks like I need to be going downstairs, right? Maybe. Okay. Banshee wants to speak to you about the history of the Wither Horde. Okay, so this is a quest. Okay, we'll do that later. I think what we need to do is we need to see, first of all, what um, the new story mission is. Abandoned quest as well. Okay, that's quite new. Vanguard communications, okay, so that's part of uh, advanced activities. Um, monument to lost lights, vault. Well, there's only one thing we need to do Advent. Welcome to the tower, the last bastion of humanity against the forces of darkness. So, this is what I need to do. last survivors of humanity's collapse called the city home. This is why I brought you back. 
to defend them and to reclaim our lost worlds. We're here. The Traveler. The last city. Welcome home. Step. Welcome to the tower and the last safe city of humanity. I've been here many times over the years. I'm glad you finally get to see it, to see why we're here and what we need to protect. Let's start by registering your jump ship. Go to Manda first. The Guardian rises. Hey there, Mother says as she stands up from a disassembled sparrow engine. She wipes grease off her hands with a dirty towel. You must be sure, Spal. He told me you were coming. Said to take it easy on you. She offers a casual smile. Name's Holiday. I run the hangar here in the tower. You need anything relating to ships, sparrows, any other kind of engine? Well, you simply come back to me. I'll take care of your bird here while you get to live the land. I think Zavala was expecting you up in the courtyard. You take care now. She says with a wave as she grabs a wrench and dives back into her work. New step, talk to Zavala. Okay. Nice, isn't it? It's good to have somewhere that feels like home. For me, this is it. Okay, next up is tower security. We've had an increase in guardians sneaking in contraband since a fellow called the Drifter arrived. So Vanguard Command instituted a check for first-timers. Looks like the superconductor's Golden Age tech triggered some warnings. I'm clearing it with security. Commander Zavala would like to meet you in person. I'll lead you to him. Zavala leads the entire Vanguard, the group that supports all Guardian operations. Lately, he spends more time commanding troops than fighting on the front lines. He placed some of the first stones in the wall we're standing on. Zavala thinks every life in the city is his responsibility. Even a guardian has trouble bearing that kind of weight. He's going to need your help. Well, the old tower is no longer. So we are being brought back to the... Uh... Up there in the sky? That's the Traveler. It's where I came from, where the light you wield came from. Well, this is proper storytelling. It's really bringing you in. It's much easier to uh, comprehend when all the actions, activities, characters, and everything else we actually we can see exactly what's happening, and that is quite significant, different compared to the original where we had the entire story told through our ghost. Ah, it's you. The one that saved Shaw. Thank you for that. Your ghost has been looking for you for a long time. I'm glad he finally found you. And now you found the light. The Traveler entrusted us with his power so that we may protect our people from the forces that threaten our existence. You've carried out that duty from your first steps in the Cosmodrome. I don't take Shaw's recommendation lightly, but you have much to learn, and the conflict with the darkness is unyielding. We will analyze the superconductor you recovered. In the meanwhile, I've left you something in my office. Use it well. Zavala welcomes you to your new home, the last city. He encourages you to continue meeting the residents of the tower and informs you that there is a gift waiting for you in his office. Right, so we need to collect his gift. Zavala doesn't usually talk that much. You should take that as a compliment. I've marked his office on your tracker. Careful not to break anything in there, and don't touch his music. 
Well, this is a very good introduction, a very good tutorial, because quite frankly, Sunny Zavalin here, as we walk around the tower, all the other characters will be popping up and will be introduced to their abilities and all the other characteristics that I have. So it's a lot better storytelling compared to the original. It does feel like a proper RPG, I've got to admit. It's interesting because I talked about um, the absence of full RPG inclusion after uh, Shadowkeep and uh, I think our friend said that there is a very big difference after Beyond Light <coughs> arrived and I certainly can agree with that straight away as so I'm doing my character. It's my new character Hunter and I think I was really wise to be um, able to sort of just sit on all other two characters and wait for those new DLCs coming in because it gives us an opportunity to compare. Anyone interested, just go back to my old streams, all of them archived on YouTube, you'll be able to see the way the game looked like at that time. We've done the entire campaign on my Warlock, and, uh, you know, so this is just a refresher, a reminder, and uh, this is our first run on the new story. Or I should say, the, the new old story. Old new, new old? Well, we're familiar with the story, but it's being retold in a different fashion. Oh, he's here. Okay, we're not going to talk to him at the moment. Curious to see whether all the other guys are there. Didn't see Tess. Yeah, she's not there. Cage is not there. Master of is not there. Oh, he is there. Okay. Right, we'll just ignore them and we'll follow the marker. So where is the gift? It must be downstairs. No? No, that's not true. Oh, I'm mistaken. Zavala's office is a bit silly. It should literally take you downstairs as you jump on it. I've not been here before, so I'm curious to see um, what is on display. For all of you familiar with my RPG style, I always explore every single area, spend a lot of time looking at every single detail. <coughs> There we are. This is his office. Chest. They'll probably be introducing many more items in there for us to pick up, explore, analyze. You know, in the future, at the moment, it's just some of the basics. All the stuff that we are familiar with. This is a Vanguard service weapon. Okay. But it's from Zavala's personal collection. Shaw must have talked you up quite a bit. Or maybe Zavala saw something in you. Where to next? Oh, you should head to the bazaar. That's where we'll find Ikora. Hmm. I need to increase the volume somewhat, I think. I need to find out what the volume is here. Shop volume, music volume. Okay, so it 
interesting. What we'll do is SFX will increase to 5 and music will leave at 3. This music's usually very loud. Otherwise I'm not able to experience the game, you know, properly. If there are any issues with the game loudness, just spot me a message and tell me that, you know, we need to reduce it and we'll bring it back to the old. I think it worked pretty well as far as our chats are concerned, but um didn't really do too well as far as my own kind of experience of the game is. Mm. Okay, so we need to talk to Akora. So we need to find out. We know where she is. It's quite interesting. The tower just keeps grabbing. Discovering all these other... Well, we need to go in there. Oh, I've got it. We need to wait for the lift to come. And then we jump on it. Okay. Use myself jumping down. Okay. She will be in the courtyard. Some chaps in there munching away, talking. I guess it's becoming a bit more. Akora Ray is the warlock vanguard. She leads the tower's warlocks, like Zavala leads the titans. She does a little bit of everything. Guiding the warlock orders in research and development, enemy reconnaissance and internal affairs. And she's a sight to see in the crucible. I was just going to say that uh, this particular part reminds me of Anthem. In Anthem you walk around, it looks very similar to this section, bazaar. And then, you know, characters talk to each other. Well, it's not surprising the games will borrow from each other just to develop some parts in a different direction. They really need to introduce some dialogue. Because it, it definitely will be very interesting to hear. And like in Skyrim or, you know, Bioware and uh, Bethesda games, you get to know a lot more about the world that you live in. Well, we can't really easily interact with them. You're still provided with some interesting content. In fact, uh, I told my friends here the other day that uh, I'm absolutely loving the special edition of Skyrim, playing it at the moment, not on my broadcast obviously, and um, they introduced so many different mods, the mods that were previously accessible <coughs> to PC players, and it just changes the nature of the game completely, so I have uh, two companions following me around everywhere, and lots, lots of lots of new dialogue and you know, interactivity, and it makes the game really properly worthwhile when it comes to replayability and a very lengthy, very lengthy, almost indefinite shelf life. This is Ikora. Hello. What do you seek? Welcome home, Guardian. I heard your journey to the last city was an eventful one. Ikora says as she gazes at the traveller. It may not feel like it now, but the tribulations you faced were a blessing. She turns to address you. Her stare is bit piercing. The Guardian's path is one of hardship and peril. The traveller's gifts paved the way, but the road is still a hard one to walk. But you need not walk it alone. The vanguard is here for you, as are your fellow guardians in the last city. She hands you a small lacquered box. Accept help where you can find it, guardian. Our light shines brighter when we are together. So we're getting, we are getting uh, our ghost. New step. Speak with the drifter. So the Drifter is a character that has not been present in the original game, so I'm quite curious to see how he is going to be introduced here. And, uh, well, it's an adjustment, I guess. What is it? Need to see this ghost. Always nice to see Ikora. While we're over here, we should check in with the Drifter. You may be wondering who leads the Hunters. See, we lost Cade 6 our hunter vanguard, a while back. Killed by a man named Aldrin Sol. 
It was a difficult time. Now no hunter wants to take his place. Being a hunter has its challenges. You'll find that out yourself soon enough. Hmm. We just heard that Kate was killed, right? Well, that's very odd, considering no, this is the very course. beginning of the game, and no. Kate was very much part and parcel of everything we did. So we're really talking about some sort of um, adjustment of time and space, and um, I'm not exactly sure when this is taking place. Because as you've seen, we've come to Cosmodrome, and the first game started out in the same area. And once we've gone back to the tower, we didn't get the old tower. I don't know. We what arrived at the new one, or you know, the tower from the sequel. And this tower was only uh, introduced as a rebuilt version of the one that got obliterated during the Red War massive big assault right at the beginning of the game. So it's a bit confusing for us who were with the game right from the beginning. And um, we just heard that Cade's dead. So it means Cade will not be featuring here at all, but where will he be featuring? Because we are playing Forsaken, right? Forsaken has Cade as one of the main characters, and um, he also gets eliminated in there. And we just heard about those uh, nasty um, monarchs that um, Queen and her brother, the brother Adrian Soy, who indeed eliminated Cade. And this is one of the most hotly disputed, contested part of the story right from the beginning because when he came out with Forsaken people absolutely outraged that the most lovable character in the game was taken out. So the next person to speak to is our friend Drifter. Okay. So we're all being introduced to them very early.
So we'll go downstairs and find our friend. No, he's not there. Going the wrong way. Is he? No? Where did I get to? Very odd. been extended. And there we are, our friend's there. What's up, hero? The Guardian rises. You look like you could use a friend, Rita says with a smirk. Back from the grave with almighty powers, just to wind up in this stuffy place, saluting Commander. Sounds like a bad beat. A coin appears in Drifter's hand. He casually rolls it across his knuckles. I could use a friend too, you know. And what you need to understand is, old Drifter always takes care of his friends. His smile stretches ear to ear. How you tore the hive up a uh, good back in old Russia? Tell you what, since you like tussling with knights, you can have his sword. No charge, of course, for a friend. Just swing back when you're tired of being Zavala's Iran runner, and we'll talk business. Okay. So we need to speak to Lord Shax. See, the thing about Drifter is, he's unique. Let's leave it at that. Need to increase the uh, dialogue. Louder. You got somewhere go. to be? Yeah, it's bad. How about a bandit? Properly. If he comes across as too loud, then please let me know because I think you can hear things a bit differently compared to me. That's to do with my Twitch setup here on my system. Bazaar! Look at that. Look at that. Pigeons! This star feels a lot more alive <coughs> compared to the old. So we would all know. Oh, and no tour of the tower would be complete without meeting Lord Shax. Shax is in charge of live fire drills and general combat training for guardians. It all happens in the Crucible. Where Shax oversees battles of light versus light. So this is a good introduction. This is like your proper in-game tutorial, right? You come to the tower after you completed the missions on Cosmodrome. You get introduced to Zavala, to Drifter, to Lord Shax, to Akora. Let's see what he says. What do you mean you can't concentrate? What? Did you show the darkness what light can do? Indeed, I did, sire. Shohan's saviour arrives, Lord Shaq says. He does over you, standing proudly in front of the waving crucible flags that adorn his workplace. 
You managed to survive the Cosmodrome Guardian, but your steel is not yet tempered. He clasps his hands together. When you're ready for a real test, join your fellow guardians in the crucible. Only by pitting yourself against other light bearers uh, can you fully forge yourself into the weapon you're meant to be. You can now access the Triumphs menu. Triumphs are a collection of specific objectives to your Triumph score. Objectives to achieve within Destiny 2, completing them contributes to your Triumph score and sometimes grants additional rewards. Claim the item below to unlock the system. All battles are just a lesson, oh, Guardian. Isn't Shaq something? When he's not yelling, he plays dodgeball with the children of the city. He, uh, yells during that, too. Anyway, Zaval is asking us to visit the gunsmith next. His name is Banshee44, our resident firearms expert. Quartermaster. You don't look too banged up. Banshee stands at a countertop, meticulously inspecting an unfinished weapon. Oh, hey, you're near here, he says gruffly. Don't think I've seen you around here before, then again, not good with faces. Trends off, his attention back to some detail of the rifle in his hands. He regards you carefully for a moment. Oh, that's right, Commander told me you were coming, asked me to get you fully set up. Got it on a note right here. Here, take this. It's solid. His eyes look past for a moment before snapping back. Oh, hey, wait, we spoke already, right? Stay safe. New step. Now we need to speak to Master Rahul. Put him down. Nice and quiet. Last stop is Master Rahul, the Tower Cryptarch. That's short for Crypto Archaeologist. Well, before we do that, we'll just use the weapons. We need to equip them. So that's 1132, that's 1178. That's looking good. And then we have also that lonesome, which is a bit more powerful. 1176. Grenade launcher. It's a bit odd. Not really a major increments but nevertheless we'll, we'll use it so we'll go to Master Rahul if you recollect Master Rahul was a one of the most important characters in Destiny 1 curious to see whether he will be enhanced uh, after this uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, reboot and um, in the old game we had to be no, using him for be that simple, the could it? engrams and doing various other sort of things. So every single time we get back to the tower, he was the person to visit. Because engrams provide you high quality weapons with uh, a lot more light than everything had in the inventory, and therefore you always have to be talking to him as frequently as possible. That was not the case in the sequel. In the sequel, he was having very little to do. Ah, oh, shall we begin then? Indeed. Greetings, Guardian, he says. His attention does not shift from the data pad in his hand. As the tower's resident cryptocologist, I am ever at your service. His tongue is dry and flat, and he does not look at you. Bring me any engrams you find, I will decrypt their matter into a usable state and hopefully learn something interesting in the process. You can now access the seasons menu. Seasons last for a certain period of time. Provide a variety of rewards as you gain experience. Claim the item below to unlock the system. Okay, so we've got this. Now you need to go back to Commander Zavala. That about wraps it up. There are still people in the tower to meet, but you can do that at your own pace. Zavala sent me a message saying he has a mission ready for you. Check in with him if that sounds interesting, or we can just explore. In any case, I'm with you till the end. You take the lead. So we're back to the ghost. The ghost is talking. The city looks so beautiful. I hear from you up are making here. progress, Guardian. 
Indeed, sire. I Good to have you back. So you finished your rounds. These people are invaluable resources for your journey as a guardian. You would do well to remember, but as you take your next steps. Speaking of which, I have your first assignment. Shaw has successfully tracked down an avoider in the Cosmodrome. I'm authorizing a strike operation to eliminate her, and I want you on it. My Voita is responsible for the death of two fellow guardians. We cannot allow her to cull any more of our ranks. I'm trusting you and sure to get the job done. Good luck, Guardian. Complete a strike that is graced by accessing the Vanguard playlist screen in the destination screen. Vanguard playlist. Okay, so we'll, we'll get that. So this is complete. Okay, we'll just wait for a moment. Back to the front guardian. Back to the front guardian. Two of us watching together the world. Oh no, I was not able to take my screenshot. Sadly so, but you know, all gone. So we'll open director. Quests. Complete the strike that is graced. Okay. In fact, I could have gone back to Zavala. I didn't pick up any bounties, you know. Just a bit silly. We need to have as many bounties as possible. So remember, if you are a novice guardian and novice gamer here in destiny make sure that every single time after you've done the admin talk to everyone you collect as many bounties as possible bounties are going to be providing you with extra rewards and xps and you'll get better quality weapons you level up faster and it's essential that you always grab as many as possible it's even more important in destiny one because destiny one was uh, a game moved at a different pace it's all a lot slower in terms of your rankings and progression and there were lots and lots of activities you had to complete first and here is it, it, you know the game gives you a variety and therefore you can um, approach it from any angle so it is a bit more diverse all considering <coughs> Um, yeah, Zavala, that's right. Jeeves here. Hello, how are you doing? Good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining our community of Destiny Veterans here on Hello, the channel. Guardian. We're doing our first run on the Hunter and... I kept my hunter untouched because I wanted to see what would happen with uh, Beyond Light and the game being reworked and we're just sort of experiencing the new story really, or I should say the old story and um, delivered in a different Make good so we'll news pick up all of these and we'll try to complete. A prepared soldier is a victorious soldier. Now I think. Each new day is a bit now we'll go up. <coughs> and we said the uh, let's see quests. We didn't get all the bounties. I picked up quite a few. Bit odd. New light. Complete the strike. Okay. <coughs> so that is what we are going to be doing. Anna tells me you are making significant contributions. D 
Disgraced Strike in Cosmodron. So that's interesting. Let's see what this activity is going to be. Our friend uh, Jeeves says, Cool, I'm a hunter as well. Fantastic. Well, I didn't really work on other two characters because I knew from Bungie that they will be reworking the story and I wanted um, to have a you know, successive run on different characters in order to see how the game is going to be um, reshaping. So that gives us a very good opportunity to see. And uh, I'm just asking our veterans and our viewers you know, earlier in the broadcast if they were interested on how things were initially, they could just go back in time hit my uh, YouTube channel and I've gone the entire campaign on Warlock and it's documented and we have lots of community members participating in this process as well so you know uh, I have to say that um, the game looks very different and I'm replaying Cosmodrome missions you know Guardian Rises is the way it's called and just it has a very different flavor compared to the original what really kind of disturbed me somewhat was I've um, done the Cosmodrome missions uh, on Friday with our community and then I was being brought to the tower and we have uh, basically the, the old tower is gone we don't have any more you know, the same location we've gone back to the new tower and we know full well that the new tower has been rebuilt after that red war and red war has gone so it's all a bit strange I've ruled to value strength over all else when you and Shaw forced Navota to flee you weakened her position She'll be desperate for victory to regain her footing. Well, that desperation makes her a threat in the Cosmodrome and beyond. This is a worthy challenge for you, Guardian. Oh, look, Cass and Maeve gave their final deaths fighting Navota. That can't be for nothing. It won't be. Navota needs to be destroyed, let's say. Okay. Faster than me. Bad looks of it. Steady. I know how those nerves feel. Pack it away. Eyes down the sights. to have our friends joining us today as well, but I think something must have happened because neither Sikafuku nor Spurs are available and therefore uh, I've gone down this route, although I had to be doing that section of Guardian Rises um, all by myself so maybe that's the reason, we'll see probably we'll join us a bit later to the mouth. Oh, our friend Jeeves says that he's on Xbox Series X. Well, well, you can tell us all about it. I'm very, very curious to hear what Destiny 2 looks like on the series. All in raiding party ahead. They don't seem thrilled about Novota's from you. presence. And somebody who's doing first hand. Does it perform better? Are there any differences? You know, what's the actual performance compared to uh, your previous uh, Xbox One X?
actually a lot more hectic compared to the original. Many more enemies popping up. Okay, he's gone. have a look at uh, what our friend's saying in the moment because you know we are still in the thick of the battle so I've got to uh, ignore our teammates in there if you know what I mean oh yeah he's got really very good AI he's jumping and evading okay so that's all sorted our friend says uh, um, the I'm graphics are very crisp. In a facility up ahead. Like it's really Devoted definitely worth it for me. Some people say we it's all the next gen that it's net worth. That's the gig. We carry the light where no one else can. Since I never played in 60 FPS console before, I obviously wanted one. Well, I can certainly tell you, I'm playing Skyrim Special Edition on Xbox. And you can really tell the difference when it comes to the actual frame rates because it's not performing on 60 FPS and um, also don't forget if he does have a reduced frame rate you get a lot of this flickering light so you might get a bit tired and twitchy in a longer run with some of the um, you know FPS games a lot of activity but when you're running them on 60 or 120 FPS it's so smooth your eye does not even notice it you know there's like no flicker and that's obviously of very very major advantage I'm very sensitive to that in fact when I see a game that's, uh, you know, having that frame rate, which is a bit slow, then, um, um, you know, I, I've got to be very careful. It's affecting my brain. So for myself, I just can't wait to be uh, playing all these games on 60 and 120. People don't realize the difference is incredible. I mean, I, I played Destiny on the Samsung setup, and uh, in September, I think, I... Yeah upgraded to my Sony Bravia, so everything's in Sony Bravia, 60-inch TV, um, and the experience of Destiny, that massive big screen, is just out of this world. And I have to say, when you have PlayStation, and you connect it to um, Sony Bravia, but obviously, you know, both devices are Sony made, the quality of the sound as well. I mean, Xbox performs beautifully on um, Sony Bravia as well, but it's just that there's a tiny bit of difference because obviously, um, you know, Bravia fully integrated with PlayStation app and everything else. So uh, that's the that's the only difference really. But I know I what the difference down is. The rest of Devota's hiding spots. She's got nowhere to run. And anyone oh, tells you that it's not really worth it is, you Just know, these people part. are not really familiar Your with, hands now, Guardian. with everything else that comes to the village. Nope, oh, Alright, take her down. Where's Novoita? Where's Novoita? Maybe I'm doing the wrong thing. Our friend says that the quality of graphics are much higher. Hang on, let's see whether I need to go in there. I probably do.
what's happened in there? This is basically our old Omnigal strike that's been reworked. What's happening in there? Misadventure? No, I didn't get it. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, I got things. Got hit from all sides. To be able to get uh, my super. Oh, we did manage to do the Yes. Maeve. They can rest easier now. Okay, thanks to you. Quite good. Couldn't have done it without you, Shaw. Maybe. 
Don't sell yourself short. I see a spark in you, Guardian. Oh, that's Make good. Sure you keep it safe. Don't let it get to your head, okay? This is only the beginning of your story. Excellent work. Return to the tower. Oh, very good. Spark of hope, new quest. Speak with Commander Zavala. Very good. So we just wait until we are loaded in full. We'll get back to the tower. Our friend was saying there about the quality graphics. Hang on. Turn to orbit, we've seen this. <coughs> Need to go back to the tower. Yeah, I just want to get back to our friend there. He was asking about the um, quality graphics and I you know, as I was doing the strike, I was half you know, means my words, giving you sort of half baked description. Uh, there are several benefits of um, uh, being in possession of the new Series X Xbox console. First of all, you will have 4K, 8K compatible graphics. Secondly, you have up to 120 FPS. And then thirdly, what you will be getting is this new access to, I don't know whether it's 8 or 10 games instantly with resume button. So if you were, for instance, playing several games at once, and if you wanted the game to be resuming immediately, you just click on resume and you'll get in within seconds. Loading periods are much faster than before. It does have all other um, extra abilities that the previous consoles did not have. So, you know, uh, if you consider that uh, the next-gen gaming, that includes the games like Destiny, the big space operas, the big, you know, the games like Elder Scrolls or Mass Effect or... Far Cry, you, you name it, any of those Fallout, it is all going to be about the full experience of that world. So it's the quality experience and the dimension of it as well. Bigger screens, better quality graphics, faster frame rate, um, more immersive environments, better sound quality. So all of that is very important. And I certainly can tell you from my point of view, because I've um, played on my Samsung setup uh, for a couple of years and I've just gone now to Sony Bravia 60 inch and you know I just feel really fully part of the world S sound quality is second to none audio visuals are mouth watering you know beautiful bright razor sharp colors and uh, contours it's just the way it needs to be so for a game of this magnitude there isn't a better way to play it and it will make it particularly enjoyable if you had a first run on another system, perhaps the old gen system, and then you upgrade both your TV set as well as your um, console to the next gen. I'm quite certain if you play Cyberpunk, a game that many people disputed during the last few weeks, you know, it's it's been the biggest digital console release ever. So they've sold more copies than any other game in history. So they made an enormous amount of money. And you know the fact is it didn't perform well on the old gen consoles. It should have really worked a lot harder on that to prevent all the problems. But um, if you are to be playing Cyberpunk or any of the other next gen games, for instance, Medium is coming out later this month, and I'm very very curious to see what Medium is going to look like on uh, the Xbox Stroke um, massive big TV setup. It just looks incredible, right? And also if you're subscribed to Xbox Game Pass which I believe you are, on the ultimate subscription, you're going to be getting this game on the day one, free of charge, because you're a subscriber, you don't have to buy it. And, uh, you know, the if you really want to see the best performance of your new console, you will need to be waiting somewhat for those latest releases. I think Valhalla and Watch Dogs, these are the games that are being created for the next gen, and therefore they will be performing the very best with audio visual quality, you know, the immersive environments and everything else. And therefore, I believe, um, you know, you, you'll, you'll be uh, having the best possible immersive experience if you were to be <coughs> playing and entertaining some of these games. Many more to follow, many more to come. What I'm trying to say is, with the reworked old-gen games, they will look amazing, they'll look much superior to the old, but still, the very best performance will be coming out of the games that were created for the next gen. If you see what I mean, 
they worked on the engines and on the system and setups for the next gen graphics and therefore you know Valhalla and Watch Dogs will certainly be providing the very best experience. On the other hand you had games like Gears uh, 5 that have been also remastered and reworked for 4K and I certainly could tell the difference even if I watched it on YouTube because the textures were much more in depth there was a lot more attention given to detail the colors seemed a bit brighter the overall images were highly somewhat you know better illuminated and the um, atmosphere of that uh, world of terror and uh, post-apocalyptic post type of existence that the characters are leading was massively enhanced so you know well it's sad because we are getting a lot of new tech within a relatively short period of time but you know things are evolving and um, I can certainly tell you if you are playing Call of Duty Mobile on the latest points I have Sony Bravia 5 2 uh, you know you are going to be having a massive amount of advantage compared to anyone else is using maybe some of the older Sony Xperia phones or playing on some you know other Androids that already are seen as uh, museum pieces it's the chip it's the graphics it's the speed it's 5g it's everything and that's just the way it is and uh, I think what is particularly important and noble about the works of Microsoft Studios and the Xbox uh, project altogether they want to have the entire library of games accessible across the board on any console so therefore if you are to be um, um, you know, purchasing the uh, latest you will have to be getting also that backward compatibility which will give you access to 1% of the titles ever released on Xbox I think that's terrific because if you bought that new console then any game you ever would have purchased will play on it and you know how it works if you have old discs you stick them in you get the update digitally and the game will be there uh, for you to enjoy and um, you know that's fantastic I actually had to go um, uh, recently um, at some of the other games that I played a lot in the very beginning the games like um, Splinter Cell Trilogy Mass Effect Trilogy Dragon Age Trilogy you know uh, go back in time and all of them perform beautifully. They, they were just you know, properly reworked for uh, the next gen consoles and um, there was no problem. Assassin's Creed as well, I forgot to mention. So that's the future. I think PlayStation la lagging somewhat behind the effort. They don't want to have that full backward compatibility and that's a real pain. And they still want to be selling the older games to be resold the second or third time. I think it just literally shot in the dark. It's a strategy that will fail and also they're not really investing in um, PlayStation community uh, you know Xbox does have everything better integrated the apps and online presence hence the promoters presenters the regular shows you know, the weekly highlights uh, everything we get through um, the podcasts and uh, broadcasts are rule so it's much more advantageous I think for uh, the community but on the other hand PlayStation is accessible in the vast majority of the countries whilst Xbox is still having that restriction like a region restriction and hope that they'll, you know, they'll, they'll do away with this as they introduce xCloud full access because I, I've spoken to people in Eastern Europe you know Poland, Czech Republic, uh, Austria, Croatia, Slovenia, Hungary and they said well no we do not use Xbox at all and the problem is that regional coding and regional access to certain services with PlayStation we don't get this we just plug in and play and that is the downside of Microsoft so pros and cons and everything alright so I hope our friend is still there Jeevsh very good to see you and thank you for joining us thank you for being our valued community member quests what do we have there Hive Striker completed Fallen Striker completed Elegant Weapon completed so that's all very good Need to return back to Zavala by the looks of it. Complete bounties from Zavala. Oh, I've got something on my seasonal content as well. Let's see what we've got. Well, this is very good. One cloak, hunter cloak. We'll wear it immediately. And 6,000 glimmer. Well, I discovered that glimmer after last update was easier to get but um, as they launched Beyond Light it was very scarce I think lots of people complained 
Did I get it or not? Hang on. I did. Still something else. A little bit surprising, isn't it? No, that, that has been fully completed. Um, this is the Valor's office for a gift from Osiris, your seasonal artifact. Okay, we need to uh, pick this up. Trials return, speak with Saint in the tower. Beyond light, call of darkness on Europa answered. Okay. One way or the other, the next destination is obviously the tower. And we need to go to Zalala. Okay. Get ready for some more action, more admin, more adventures here in Destiny Beyond Light. I just realised when Mike was still muted, um, saying that um, surprised that our friends burst and suck a poop up here today. And something could have happened. Play ball. Hi. There we are. Our friend Katie's there. Checking now. Some items Transfer. in there as well. Whenever you need me again, pick them up. And then don't forget, once you pick them up, you need to equip them as soon as possible. So that's 117, that's 1185, so take 1195. And the other ones will delete immediately. Just remember Ready? to delete everything that is not necessary. Always delete. By that I mean delete immediately. Eight to six. Sure. Rhythmic physical expressions won't win a fight, but they feel good. And feeling good is better than not. Checking for messages. Eleven sixty one. Eleven sixty one. No. What's this one? Eleven thirty-two, eleven seventy-eight. Can you see this for a moment? Probably, probably can I use this. Yeah, you can. Ready. So it's somewhat better. Eleven seventy-seven. Okay, this one we'll get rid of. 1176, 1177, 1176, 1150. Ah, well, that is not useful. Anything else? No, oh, that's about it. So, who Hi. else was there? Let me think. Always something new in the Eververse. Again, Always something new in the Eververse. We've not talked to Epesis yet. Oh, I picked up something there. Excuse me. 
Let me see. Seasons. C30G is locked in the city. We're understaffed already. Can't fix the roofs. Can't see what I need to look. Looking at. for anything in particular, Guardian? They wanted us to look at this. We get season pass. No, 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 no. That's the one. Fenchurch says a lot of fantastic things. I tend to believe him. Well, seasons. <coughs> Season of the hunt. Step on up. Take um, a look. When to speak to Zavala, of course. Come see me again, Guardian. Sure. Rhythmic physical expressions won't win a fight, but they feel good. And feeling good is better than not. I can't see what's uh, highlighted in there. Pretty odd. Hello, Guardian. Big sample everywhere, Guardian. Strikes are an important component in our defense of humanity. As of now, I'm proving you for our full range of strike protocols. We're always in need of more fire teams ready to take the fight to the enemy's door. Zavala holds one hand against the other palm. There are other matters at hand, however, we analyze the superconductor and it's exactly what we hoped for. We believe it can be used to reconstruct a powerful arc weapon, a salvaged piece of Golden Age technology. Ikora led the research efforts. She's waiting for you now. Good luck. So we need to pick up this quest. New step. We need to go to Ikora, talk to her. Okay. Very good. Come back then. Okay. Make good use of it. Got all of that. Oh, we didn't do the uh, Hello, XPs. Guardian. We forgot. Complete bounties for XPs, of course. This is why we do all the bounties. Quickly to a Quora. Battle looks well on you. Battle looks well on you, sir. Thank you. Try my best, sire. At any hour. Well, there's no one in here. Ikora is just to our left. Assignment in progress. Assignment in progress, sir. So, where is the rest? Well, well, come the wrong way. I try the other way. Yep. I don't want to What can you teach me? A spark of hope. There is a record of a powerful weapon listed in our archives. An arc powered submachine gun lost during the collapse. We recovered the frame of this weapon during a vanguard operation. But uh, it was incomplete, lacking the necessary power source to operate it. Thanks to Yun Shou, I believe we have such a power source in this superconductor. The inoperable frame was hidden somewhere in the EGZ by a former hunter vanguard. We have a scout there, Devrim K. He can help you find it again. Okay. So we need to find Devrim. Well, that's all new, I'm afraid, because uh, Devrim was not featuring in. That's the Mimon. You made good use of the Traveler's Gift so far. The Fallen and Hive in the Cosmodrome can attest to that. But this is the only this is only the beginning, Guardian. Our power manifests in myriad ways. To reach your true potential, you must reach out to the light and take hold all of the possibilities it offers. Ikora clenches a hand into a fist. This journey takes time, Guardian, but it's one we must 
or walk if we are to be facing the darkness. So good luck. Ornamental container, a small box containing symbolic curious that represent the forms of light, arc, solar and void, gifted by Akora as a reminder of your journey to master the light. So we have Slinger Sight and Ornamental Container. So we're definitely going to be equipping Slinger Sight immediately because it's more than fitting emotes, finishes, and emblems. Well, Hunter's Wit was the first one, but as you can see, Slinger Sight is a legendary and looks better because we're using that wonderful golden gun. Uh, I've not had this emblem before, so I'm very, very happy and proud. Looks nice and bright and orangey. Supporting William the Orange, right? Maybe, maybe not. And uh, we need to go Hunt and well find Devrim, I think. That's the next step. So let's double check the on the quest. Oops, there's a spark of hope. Is that? Yeah, that's right. We need to um, I must have lost track get to Devrim. Hello, Got it. Exotic archive, that's not really a Okay, I'll take ten percent of concern dungeons. Everyone, one moment, please. I don't want you to record this transaction. Okay, so that will be just the quests. Fifty percent hey, now and fifty percent when the curtain comes in. Yes, fifty fifty, that's the idea. You're doing great out there, Deborah. Ah, Thank you for everything. Everyone, one moment, please. I don't I get it. You There's got to be something there that I've not detected. Anyone that spots it, tell me. Guardian? Maybe it's something I've not My claimed. My hidden are scattered and quiet. I need information, Guardian. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Wild Hunt grasps. Claim. And there is another one. Strides. I spot it was. I forgot about it. He's the best pilot I know. And before the war, 88. He was right Avenge him, Guardian. Somebody shouting I something for the Empire. I I wonder who but I'll cover for you here. On the Avenge him for both of us. Okay, I have to feed my fans. That sounds great, Amanda. Then we can. Sorry. How many rounds? Is that a tradition or did you just pick a number? Alright, so that's about it. So we need to go to EDZ European Dead Zone. And we need to As meet Devrim. Everyone ready? Uh, steady. Go. Great. My mind seeks okay, our next step, but, but I still have time for you. Not so loud. Trustland. Well. Hmm. What they did not say is that they're changing the actual story of Destiny. So we are already missing out on some of the content from Destiny 1. On the other hand, it may be added on later. It may well be all developing into a completely different direction with all the chapters brought in, but perhaps with a different sequence, you know, different sequence of events, that's possible. Because we've gone back to the tower, so this is the new tower. And there's no mention of that tower being previously under any form of attack or being rebuilt. And uh, I've seen some, um, I've seen some uh, rumours floating about on the internet a couple of months. Well, it's, a, it's after Beyond Light, before Christmas, and they said they've seen scaffolding in the tower and expecting the tower to be fully rebuilt. Well, we know now from the story that that's just complete nonsense. Not even been destroyed in order to be built.
very effective. Guys, we'll just carry on fighting. Always nice to see a familiar face. What's the word? Just bear with me, I need to get some water. It's feeling a bit dizzy. Back in a second. I'm back. We'll carry on with activities here in Destiny 2 still for about 40 minutes, but then we'll go to Warzone. So, uh, um, let's see what we've got. Spark of Hope. Ah, welcome to my cozy hideaway, Guardian. I could have said you'd be coming. Told me what's what. Sounds like you are looking for weapon frame, one of Kay's old treasures. I'm happy to help, but there is a bit of a snag. The former hunter Vanguard was notorious for hiding his goodies behind elaborate puzzles. In this case, that means splitting his treasure map into separate components and squirreling them away. Unfortunately, that was a long time ago, and I believe the Fallen have stolen the components. Hard to finish the jigsaw without all the pieces, eh? You raid some uh, Fallen Lost Sectors, I bet you'll find what you need. Chairs. And good luck to you. 
So we need to pick up some bounties, right? Mm. I hope it is helpful. Yeah, it shall be, sir. I think it will be. Now, I was busy collecting those bounties and I did not stress that I did not have a look at the task. Uh, let's see what the task is. Enter the lost sector sector. Um, enter the lost sectors in Trustland in the DZ and reclaim the fragments from the caches guarded by fallen captains. The lost sectors are hidden in the area surrounding the church, maybe even within. Look for this symbol in the world to find them. Altrium cleared, terminus these cleared, widow's walk cleared. Alright, so we need to see where these uh, lost sectors are. It has to be said that the game does have a very different flavour, and to be honest with you, it is a flavour that is a lot more pertinent compared to the one we had in the beginning. And I didn't like the planets, I have to admit, that went, and that was also to do with the design of them, and the activities there didn't seem to be as busy in here, as you could see as soon as we landed, it was very, very hectic, so that's the kind of atmosphere that we want to be having, and therefore thumbs up, really. But I'm still struggling with the story, but on the other hand, as the story is evolving, I shouldn't be jumping a gun, I should be just waiting, and maybe eventually I'll, you know, I'll get to the story. We're not there yet. You know, we need to have all the other DLCs and reworkings Goodbye, yeah, and everything, yeah. and then we'll be a bit more at home with all that's happening here. Uh, let me see whether we can see enemies on the map. I think it needs to be manually. Oh yeah, hang on. We have one to our left. Sector. That should be up here. You know, I can obviously pick up some uh, higher quality weapons from my vault. But I don't want to do that because I want to play the character with his limitations. Okay, so where is that lost sector? Hang on. Curious. So it should be to my right. Okay, so it must be there. Oh, there we are. Remember, this is a sign for lost sectors. Anyway, you see the sign, well, that's where it is. It's the other way. That's correct. walk and then what do we need to do here let's see widow's walk cleared okay we need to clear everyone run here
stitched to my actress. I don't know why this is happening. The game should not be glitched like this. We had this yesterday as well, well on Friday. We've gone to one area and then my friends could see enemies and uh, I saw nothing. So that didn't really uh, cut it for me, I'm afraid. You know. tell you. Whoa, he got away. That is ridiculous. Is it clear or not now? Nah. Oh no, I've got that chest. Is it clear when I open it? Okay, so that's good. That's all as it should be. Look at the bounty. Terminus East. It's discovered. It's in gerbil. I like that. That kind of activities. Uh, so we have no, let's get a walk. Get out of here, easy. <coughs> Let's travel to uh, <coughs> Trossland instead of walking all the way back. I'm 
to see where another <coughs> lost sect is. Collect loot. Okay. Oh, here. Okay, I didn't see it. I did not even see it. They said his lost sectors are scattered around the church. This is the one I discovered already. It's not it. Mm. Yeah, it's out of the entrance. Okay, so we'll try to find that one. See whether that is the one. It's a real pain not being able to see the map quicker. So that should be still further down, and then what? Turning right. Okay. Look right. <coughs> Into the office way. Further up. Yeah, you can really tell the difference between. Uh, quality of uh, the works here and what we had initially. You know, that's a very, very big difference. That looks like that should be here, I think. Yep, that's correct. It should be just down here. What's this? Cross line still, okay. Mm -hmm.
just ahead of us to our left. Standing on it must be must be here. Yes, that's right. Found it. That's pretty good. Bang. Well done, Miller. So I need to look for these captains. Scavengers then. the outskirts. inside the church, let's see. Hmm. Instead of walking, we'll just go back and fast travel. I think I missed it. I think I missed it when I walked. And that's certainly my assumption. literally run the church. I didn't hear from you, but I did see that skiff go by. 
That's all right. We'll get them next time. This is what it says, probably. I've not been here before. That's it. That's it. Got it. Should be a big box in the chest, right? We cleared everything and everyone. Maybe not. Maybe we still have somebody else to uh, contest. I missed it. I missed it. They must. Uh, that chest must be somewhere around the area where the captain was.
connect loot. Good. So we have still one left. Atrium and Widow's Walk and our Terminus. Right, so where is Terminus? Must be nearby. the third one so that should be hang on didn't spot it well enough so it should be further up and then to our what is it turn around and to left to our left is it there oh, I've been there already it's not it so it's One exactly the opposite. It's unlikely. is not it. Is that? Yes, it is. Yes, it is.
back to Devrim. Sounds good. Completed the quest. Let's just go quickly down there. And that's probably going to be the last activity in Destiny 2 for us today. Very quickly migrate to Warzone. Have two more hours of entertainment in there with our mates. It's good to see that Spurs and um, Sekapoop were not able to join us because it's been really enjoyable. Really, we would have had a lot more fun if we were a three piece. Hope everyone is healthy, safe, and well, that nothing happens. Guardian. There we are, our friend Come Devrim. Now. Speak your mind. Speak your mind. I met Kate enough times to know a thing or two about his code names for things. Cosmonaut Club. Devrim scratches his beard and stares out the window of the steeple. I bet the pot he's referring to, to the Cosmodrome, but um, must have been spooked by something and decided to relocate the package there. You're probably best off checking the interior of the Cosmodrome wall. That is the only place you could reliably hide something from the Fallen in old Russia. Good luck, Guardian. Don't forget the coins. Guess a bit nippy in Siberia this time of year. Complete the mission risk reward in the Cosmodrome. So we need to go back to Cosmodrome, but that is not what we are going to be doing today. We are off to the tower and then we'll have a look at the admin and call it a day. There we are. Tower it is. Launch. Hope you guys enjoyed the activities. I certainly did and had a lot of fun. Really kind of grappling with the new construct, you know, the new concept, the new story, the way it's being told. It's a bit strange to be entering some parts of the uh, Destiny 2 story and then realizing that it's been completely reworked. They're kind of blending in two worlds together, but I still can't work out as to why there was no Red War. Because all the activities in Destiny 1 were kind of guiding us towards... A sequel that would have a different sort of story, but you know, I guess I'm a bit impatient, right? Yeah, I really should wait and see. This is still work in progress, <coughs> but it looks good. And I certainly think that if I was to be entering this world three years back, then I would have been a lot more excited. Okay. Here goes. And you know, it was just really, really absolutely nice no, four years ago rather than three. Seems like more energetic, lots of hectic activities and overall the story is told in a different fashion. Right, so what do we need to do here? First of all I need to look at the loot. I'll look at the loot and then wrap it up. <coughs> look at that rather fast, so that's 63, 63. 98, 1200. Okay, put that 1200 on. This one we'll get rid of. And then that's 1200 as well. Okay, this one. 1188, 1186, 98. Okay. 84, Twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. No, I don't have twelve hundred in there. Okay. So that is sorted. I'll clear down that way, Guardian. Mm, he will want the tangled to shore. It's a lawless frontier. Complete a gambit match and a gambit bounty. Take care of your friends in progress. The bank job quest. 
control matches and crucible bounties. Okay, so that's all good. Guardian, the time has come to clean up the universe. Trials what news from there. the war front? Okay, we'll leave all of that for our next session, which is going to be, guess what, tomorrow. Spark of hope, risk reward. Yeah, that's the first thing we need to do, then gazing into the abyss. Awaken a latent power of void light by any experiences, so we need to be um, using our void weapon. That's, that's the most important thing. Scorn. Well. Have no social grace. Defensive. Any strike. No, so we are building up our character rather nicely. Rumor has it all hell has broken has loose. Completed. And that is it for today. So thank you everyone for watching. Thank you for supporting our Destiny community here on my channel. Thank you for being our valued community members. Also, I'm grateful to your comment uh, for your comments and views that would have come in during the broadcast. Uh, all of our broadcasts are archived, therefore they can be easily accessed on YouTube. So if you want to see what we were doing a couple of years ago, just just go there, have a look. My YouTube channel is full of interesting videos and many of our community-based interactions. So we've come to the end for today, and we'll just migrate our wars and world instantly. And I would like to uh, um, just invite you to come back tomorrow when you resume. Uh, usually uh, we resume at around 3 o'clock in the afternoon UK time so if you are still <coughs> interested in finding out what this new story is going to bring us then absolutely make sure you join ranks with us and our community members tomorrow as we resume our adventure until then I shall wish you all a very very good afternoon and see you shortly in Warzone